Don't forget about God. Don't forget about God. What's going on, everybody? God bless y'all, my brothers and sisters around the world. Hope y'all are having a wonderful day as we give God the honor, the glory, and all the praise. My title, once again, says, Don't Forget About the Lord. I want to have this little Bible study for a moment before I get ready to get out of here. And God laid this in my spirit. Don't forget about the Lord. And as God took me back to the Old Testament, we're going back to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 through 20. I thought about how many people are going against this. These are our instructions. This is the way we're supposed to live right here, this word of God. Now we see that people look at the Constitution more important than the Bible. We see that everything God say don't do, we do it. We legalize it. So I want to talk about don't forget about the Lord for a moment. The book of Deuteronomy, Moses speaks so much to the Israelites. He tells a, a new generation of Israelites how to please God, how to live so God can truly bless them. He tells them what God has done for them. As a matter of fact, he reminds them, don't forget about the Lord who brought you through so much. He reminds them. And I'm here to remind us in this video that we can't forget about the Lord. He has already done so much, brought us a mighty long way. Every last one of us can look back over our life and see how many times God brought us through sickness. How many times he delivered us out of this situation. He said that he would always be with us even until the end of time. I will never leave you, never forsake you. Thank you, God, for never leaving us. When you look in Deuteronomy, when you look at the laws back then, when you broke them, you got dealt with. You got dealt with. Wasn't no joke. The Old Testament, you see a lot of laws. You see a lot of consequences. All this stuff we doing now, if we did it back then in that time, we've been dead a long time ago. So everything that the Word of God say don't do, we do. So let's look at chapter 8 right here. Some powerful teaching that Moses was teaching them. If you have your Bibles, my brothers and sisters, or if you just want to listen at me read as we go through these scripture by scripture, God bless you. Let's look at chapter 8, verses 11 through 20. Now let's look at 11 very closely. Notice 11 starts off saying, Beware. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. In other words, Moses telling them, watch out. Don't you go against God. Keep God's commandments. As a matter of fact, Moses is letting these Israelites know that don't get beside yourself. And look at how many people right now have gotten away from the way we're supposed to live. Let's move on to verse 12. Verse 12 says, Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, Eat right, getting full. Look at this. When you're eating good, when you when you build a nice house, is when you settle down, when you're living comfortably, when you don't have nothing to worry about. Oh, this is how it would be if we would stick to the word and obey God. You could have this nice stuff that was already promised to us anyway. But we see that most people live the wrong way and they get rich and they do things the crooked way. I mean, let's be real. Look at how many preachers are getting rich off of this now. Jesus died on the cross, and now we done turned them into a slot machine. We begging, and we got all of this stuff going on. But if we would have been obedient and lived this, word of God, you wouldn't even have to worry about all that. Verse 13 says, And when thou herds and thou flocks, not subtract, but multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied. And all that thy hast is multiplied. Look at that. 
In other words, Moses is showing the Israelites, look here, y'all. When God blesses you, it multiplies. It's going to keep multiplying. He said, he said, won't he uh, open up a window mm, and pour us out blessings that we won't have room to receive him. See, if we would really live this, we would really, Sister Deborah, we would be all right. When God blesses you, it multiplies. He makes it grow so much. Not only do he bless you, but he bless everybody around you. He, he will bless your whole entire family. When your herds and your flocks are growing large, Moses telling them, everything you got going on is growing. You got silver, you got gold, you are blessed. See, that's truly blessings. Uh-oh, but let's look at verse 14 and look at what it says next. Verse 14 says, Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, uh-oh, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. See, right here in verse 14, Moses, once again, he, he, he's reminding them, don't forget about who the one really blessed you. Who the one brought you out of the land of Egypt? Who? In other words, Moses is telling them, don't think you did this yourself. You haven't done nothing on your own. Don't you dare forget about the Lord. God has blessed us so much, brought us through so much, and some of us got the audacity to forget about God. You focusing so much on blessings that you have forgot about the blesser. Let the church say amen. I love how Moses reminded them he went back to what y'all been brought out of this. We got people right now stuck on themselves. And I'm telling you right now, if you're stuck on yourself, don't forget about don't forget about God. Let's look at verse 15. It says, Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water? Who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint? Y'all, y'all, we, we got to just get real with these scriptures. I want you to picture deep in your mind for a moment the wilderness. I want you to think about being out in the wilderness when it's dark and when it's all kind of insects and, and, and animals out there that can kill you. Moses is reminding them about that terrible wilderness. Who led y'all through this? You got all kind of snakes out there, scorpions, and then it's drought. It ain't no water. He said, who brought that water out of the rock? Can y'all imagine how it must have been in that wilderness? Pausing the snakes. We see these TV shows now, survival shows on TV. They ain't got nothing on what they went through, what the children of Israel went through. See, we, 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 we need to cut the TV off sometime. And look at this. Because some of them got it made too easy out there. See, they didn't, They had to depend on God. Uh-oh, let walk with me, y'all. They only hope was God. God had to feed them manna from heaven. Let me slow down because I got ahead of myself. That's verse 16. Verse 16 said, who fed thee? Who? Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna? Which thy fathers knew not. That he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee, to do thee good at thy latter end. Moses remind them, who fed you, free of charge, manna falling from heaven. Isn't that amazing? They didn't have to pay a dime. All they had to do was be obedient. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not? Moses is saying here, God took care of you. He said your ancestors had never experienced that. Hmm. Moses is saying here to them, the one who fed you mountain in the wilderness, which your ancestors have never experienced 
in order to humble and test you, but in order to do good to you in the end. Verse 17, let the church say amen, says, And thou said in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand had gotten me this wealth. Uh-oh. See, this is the scripture we need to really focus on also. Because your mouth will get you in trouble. We speak in things that we didn't even do ourselves. And that's a dangerous game to play. Moses is telling them in verse 17, look here. Y'all, don't be sitting up here thinking that you got all this on your own. So many people right now think their job is what blesses them. My job is what's taking care of me. I got money. I got 401k. I got this. I got that. I got the house. I got everything I need. So I don't have no reason to praise God and recognize God. God didn't do this. I did that. That's a terrible way to think. It's a terrible way to be. Oh, but when that job lets you go, when they come out there and say, brother or sister, we no, no, we no longer need you. We see when people lose their job, they lose their mind. We see people kill themselves and, and, and jump off bridges and, and, and get depressed. They go through so much sad times and sorrow and crying and all kind of crazy things. Next thing you know, they're in the hospital health bad because they couldn't handle depression. Woo, let the church say amen. God took care of them. He made a way. Same God that made a way for Israel back then is still the same God that's making a way for us right now. How many of y'all have never been laid off more than once? Let me throw up both of my hands. How many of y'all have ever lost a house? How many of y'all have ever pretty much been homeless? How many of y'all ever been so low down that when you didn't have nowhere to go, didn't nobody reach out to you? I know I ain't the only one throwing up my hand. How many of us know that just when we be ready to give up, that's when God will show up. And if we just remain obedient in spite of what we're going through, God will always make a way. See, when I, when I lost everything, I didn't sell dope. I hope some of my dope dealers buddies are listening. I love you. I didn't use that for an excuse to say, I can't get no job, I can't do this. You know what I did? I kept pushing. I said, eventually, somebody is going to hire me. Eventually, I'm going to find another place to stay. Eventually, I'm going to find another car to drive. I'm going to be blessed. Out of nowhere. Y'all see, I'm back in the house. I got more now than I had way I got way more now than I ever had back then because, hallelujah, I'm seeking the kingdom. See, I wasn't seeking the kingdom right like I should have been back then. But I'm so glad God threw me out there so I can fall on my head and look at what I was doing wrong. And that's when I said, you got me, Lord, right where you need me. I surrender all. And ever since I surrendered, I ain't got nothing to complain about. I got food in the refrigerator, got a roof over my head, I got clothes on my back, shoes on my feet. I might not have all the money I want, but I'm all right. I can go in there and make me a sandwich and look at it just like it's a steak. Because why? I don't forget about God. I don't forget about the one that brought me through. Woo, y'all forgive me. I got a little caught up. I forgot which verse I stopped on. I think it was 17. Oh, okay, we're on 18. We almost done. Y'all all right? All right, I hear y'all saying y'all all right. Verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, uh-oh, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. In other words, Moses telling them God is the one that makes it all possible, not you. Who the one give us health and strength, God? If you don't have good health and strength, what can you do? You ain't no good for nothing, really. All you can do is just be in pain, lay up. Somebody got to take care of you. But the God we serve, the only one, makes it possible for you to have health and strength 
to go to that job. He makes it possible that you have a way to get to that job, to take care of your family. So don't get high on yourself thinking it's you. Don't forget about the Lord. Verse 19 says, and it shall be if thou do all, excuse me, and it shall be if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them. Moses said, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. If you start walking after other gods and serve them and worship them, whoo, you will perish. The Lord will destroy you. Verse 20 says, As the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall ye perish, because you will not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. In other words, you will be destroyed, just like those other nations who God destroyed before you. God bless you, God keep you, my brothers and sisters. That's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. We talked about verses 11 through 20. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and the hearers and the doers of his holy word. People, let's not forget about the Lord. Peace and remain blessed. Oh, let me say my other saying. Let us learn from yesterday. We need to learn. Live for today as we hope and pray for tomorrow. Y'all take care.